around the mosque, several hundred men are preparing for the Mulid of Sayyidah Nafisa. Mulids are of central importance to the popular expression of Islam and usually mark the symbolic birthday of the Awliya, people considered to be favorites or friends of God. Scaffolding is erected, over which brightly colored fabrics are draped. These tents will house the thousands who have traveled from all over the country to participate in a celebration that is both spiritual and secular. As people ascend the steps to the mosque, a zikr is underway. The key motive behind any visit is to receive the baraka of the holy person. Baraka is considered as a mysterious supernatural force and is seen as a blessing from God. Shrines are usually built around the actual body or some relic of the saint. It is believed that these remains form the focus from which baraka emanates. Following the processions and the zikr in the mosque, the faithful pour into the shrine room, shouting praises to the saint and the prophet, rubbing their hands or a piece of clothing on the brass ornaments in order to facilitate the absorption of baraka. The great Sufi tariqas of Egypt, the Shazliya, Ahmadiyya and Rifai pictured here, distinguish themselves outwardly by using different colored banners and clothing and inwardly by their different techniques for spiritual transcendence. The most common technique for spiritual transcendence is called a zikr. To an outsider, the devotees may look like people in a state of trance. While some do indeed succumb to trance and hysteria, Most describe the experience as a joyful and highly conscious state, an inner clarity derived from concentrated repetition of the name of God. Om Ahmad has acquired the title of Sheikha. She belongs to the Refai Tarika. Every year she travels 40 miles to attend this festival. Why does she keep coming? The Tarika is beautiful. The mulet is a very beautiful thing. We come to see people, we see our friends, and we serve people. All of this makes us very happy. Some clean, some sweep, some cook, but all together. It's a wonderful, joyous time. At the mulet we get a beautiful sense of sustenance from God. It's something we are attracted to. It's a time to be with the devotees of the house of the Prophet. It's beautiful, and we feel so happy. We reach wonderful things in the mood. Islam is good and beautiful. If I were drunk, I could not express my feelings in a more ecstatic way. Near this scene of religious ecstasy, magic of a more conventional nature is being performed. Many of the religious rituals at Mulids derive from Sufi traditions, but those participating do not call themselves Sufis. Instead, they refer to themselves as devotees of the House of the Prophet, or in some cases, Darwish, from which we get the English Dervish. In Turkish, it means threshold, referring to one who is on the threshold of rapture. Said explains its Egyptian derivation. A Darwish is someone who has turned his back on worldly matters. He is a mendicant, someone who is poor, but poor only in worldly needs. 
His aspirations are for the other world. Darwish comes from the Egyptian dar, meaning to turn round, and wish meaning face. So a Darwish is one who has turned his face from the world. So this is the sign for the zikr. Breath is the key to many spiritual exercises, and throughout the centuries, Sufis have developed their own distinctive techniques. I remember God from the heart, and when we zikr, we go... Extreme displays of faith are less common, but can still be seen amongst the Rafai Tariqa who pierce their bodies with swords and skewers, calling upon the intercession of the saint to prevent pain or injury. The zika may last for many hours without rest. For some, the rhythmic swaying, hypnotic music and hyperventilated breathing combine to produce a state of extreme excitement, characterized by jerking limbs and frothing at the mouth. This state, perceived as a form of divine possession, called melbuz, is treated with respect. Those in the thrall of possession are held firmly to prevent them hurting themselves. <laughs> Sheikh Abdul Mordi, who is a member of the Ahmadiyya Tariqa, is also a munshid or a singer who accompanies the zikr. He describes the zikr by saying, Zikr is my inner food. It's like the water that irrigates the field. The field becomes alive through the water, so I too come alive with the zikr. With the zikr of God, we wish to be reborn and revived. Exhausted after days of intense activity, many will sleep wherever they find space. The music, interwoven with the rhythmic sounds of God's name, will continue until dawn to rise here and there from within the maze of narrow streets surrounding the mosque. The activities at Mulids have changed little in a tradition that stretches back to the dawn of Islam. A celebration of generosity, of love of life, and a firm belief in the intervention of the supernatural in the daily round. For many Mulid goers, the material deprivation of earthly life is amply compensated for by the rich web of belief that surrounds the cult of saints. Zikr means to remember God. It means we roam around with the angels. We are genuflecting to our sublime master. We're not outside. We don't know what's outside. We're inside. Do you see what's outside now? No, we're inside. When we perform Zikr, we go around with these angels and we encircle the Holy Kaaba in their company. It stabilizes our spirits and purifies them. Take away all the silly, frivolous things and let me be pure. This is Zikr.